Ill Sound Radio, we back in the building. Yes, sir. We checking in with our guests of the day. Tanae, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, y'all. Thank you for being here. For sure. Thank you for coming through. Now, shout out to you because you was at, uh, which event was that? That was the... Uh, Y'all anniversary. Okay. It was the Illinois Radio anniversary. Shout out to that night because it was busting at the permitory. For sure, for sure. And you was like, man, I fuck with what y'all go- got going on. I was like, man, you should come through for an interview. You was like, hell yeah, and now you here. Yeah, Crazy I'm so, so work. happy, man. <laughs> Shout out to you. So, so let's start from the beginning. Like, like where you from? Yeah, so I'm from Chicago, the south side. I've been a little bit of everywhere. I grew up um, like in the 80s, and then at some point we moved over to Roseland. After that, South Holland, and then I just kind of been in other parts of the city, went off to school, came back. You way around the way you go to school at U of I in Champaign. Okay, so you've been all over the the state. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What was it like going to, to U of I? Man, it was nice, you know, out the in the cornfields. You know, <laughs> what I'm saying it was really fun. Like, you know, uh, got to meet different people, got to, you know, zero in and figure out, you know, yourself and grow and all. So it was really nice. Was yeah. it like a culture shock or any anything? Yeah, it was. I mean, you know, having to. Um, yeah, get used to, like, big institutional stuff, you know, like the a certain different way of, like, navigating and, like, the politics and everything was definitely something to get accommodated to, for sure. Yeah, I was going to say, it's slower down there in them cornfields, but I heard it's a good school. Yeah, thank you. It was nice. Oh, for sure. What you uh, go there for? I actually went there for, <laughs> for bio- biology, believe it or not. Oh, man. So how did you get into, like, writing and music and everything? Man, uh, so when I went down there, I joined, like, a organization it was called word shout out to word okay y'all still <laughs> doing it y'all still doing it big and uh it was like filled with like rappers poets all that stuff and uh i did did that for a while um while i was also doing studies and then like you know how you always like okay i love you know biology that's what my heart at mm-hmm. but like you always like this is gonna be you know my main hustle right and if, if i can't do my real hustle type mm-hmm. situation and so one day I was just like, you know what? I'm going to really figure out this thing. You know, it was during COVID. I'm like, I'm going to take off and uh, see what happened with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I switched from biology, actually, to uh, urban planning afterwards, too, because I was like, I mess with the community, and I really like to get back. And, you know, so I was like, okay, let me go back to school. And then after I went back to school again, you know, when COVID hit, and I had the, the job, which was amazing, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just bet on myself and this passion and see what happened. Damn, you said fuck the job? No, no, oh, that's no, wow. <laughs> 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 not at all. It was an amazing job, you know what I'm saying? Like, and all the jobs that led up to it too was great. I was just was like, you know what? It's for once. This is a good time. You know, COVID let us reset a lot of different things and figure out what our values was and yeah. stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'ma just see what happened. You know what I'm saying? What made you wanna wanna like tap in with the community? Was that something that was always in you? Yeah, I mean. When I was at U of I in Champaign, you know, at I'm not going to speak for all college towns. It's like a separation, I feel like, between the community and the actual people who go to the university and stuff. Yeah, that's true. So I was seeing, like, a whole bunch of tension between all of that stuff, and I was like, you know what? I feel like it should be a bridge, you know, like people should be able to talk about this and figure it out, and I'll be on kind of like a solid ground. So I was like, biology is cool and stuff like that, but I really want to get to, like, helping the community as a whole. And so I went back to school for urban planning and policy. Do you feel like it's a it's a, a uphill battle that's super hard to fight? Because like you say, bridging two communities together that have no idea what each other is about. Like it's a lot of preconceived notions on both sides. So do you feel like it's an uphill battle just even trying to connect those two? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I feel like it is always like, of course, differences between everything. And so I think more so than like coming to a solid agreement it's more of like coming to a deep understanding of like where the other person coming from i think that's kind of what it ends up being and so yeah my hope is that like you know all the all the work and all the different organizations that i'm with are able to make that happen you started that uh you started the urban planet through uh you was in champagne right was in champagne so I actually came. I came back to Chicago. Okay, so you did in Chicago. That's even better because I was about to say in Champagne, 
I know a lot of towns, I mean, a lot of times in those small uh, college communities, a lot of, like, the people who actually live there, sometimes they feel like some of the students be in the way, because you know what I'm saying? A lot of uh, a lot of their taxes, a lot of their resources goes to the college, so that's probably why they walk around with a, you know what I'm saying, like a chip on their shoulder towards the uh, actual college student. But it's actually better to do something like that in Chicago, because to be honest, that's a actual city who needs something like that, you know? So, um... With that, like, what some um, community works have you done in Chicago? Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, man, so I used to be everywhere, man. I I was with an amazing organization. We did some historical preservation work. Um, so for, like, different historical commercial districts, giving them funds for, like, grants and loans to get their small businesses mm-hmm. done and stuff like that. And then currently I'm doing – working with a program in Uptown where we give out food, fresh produce, hygiene kits, and also canned goods to the community. Um, it's the Vietnamese Association of Illinois. Shout out to y'all. Um, and they're doing some amazing work, like, to pave the way and, like, bridge a lot of things. It started actually last summer when they started doing the mutual aid program. And Uptown being a historical Asian community and also uh, – African American to bridge the gap between those two things and for everyone to come to a mutual understanding. The program recording a whole bunch of narratives and getting to know people one on one at the events mm-hmm. and talking to them has been really helpful. If it was people out here that that want to to help or get involved, like what would be the best way to do that? Yeah, so we do it every other Tuesday. Um, This upcoming Tuesday, actually, we'll be doing it at our location at 5110 North Broadway. We're looking for volunteers always, so if y'all free and available on Tuesdays. We also have concurrently a winter drive where we're taking in donations to give to the community as well. So if you need any winter items or if you want to donate some, feel free to come in Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 to make that drop in, but also on t- every other Tuesday, um, starting this Tuesday. Now, for me, like growing up in Chicago, I know there's people all around the city trying to help people in the streets of Chicago. But for those people that, that watch the news and be like, oh, Chicago is this bad place and they need to help themselves first, and it's actually communities and organizations that are out here on the front lines trying to help. Like, how do you, you combat that stereotype that, that nobody cares? Mm. I mean, that's that's really deep because I feel like it is a lot of people out here. I think the intention is the thing. Like, you know, some people may do things for clout or just to say that they're doing it, but, like, you really have to, like, straight to find people who are actually doing it for the good, like the greater good. Like, sure. outside of, like, not being publicized or if people weren't being recorded or marketed about what they're doing, to know that, like, everybody who in it is in it for a real purpose. So I think it's more about intentionality than anything. I feel like like everything is on social media. Like you say, a, a lot of people don't want to be recorded while they're helping, you know what I'm saying, while they're doing sure. what they feel like every human on this planet should be doing. But I feel like maybe sometime that the, we need to be able to see these things. And like you say, you have people out there telling their life story. I think those things need to be broadcast a little bit more just to show, like, because a lot of people don't view certain people as human beings like bro everybody has been through something we've all been up and down in life but we all need help at some point in life and i think we need to normalize helping each other and the best way now is to actually show people helping each other do you feel like that yeah that's true i think like that's really true showing an example to show that like it's out there and that it's available does help i think I think it's like a, a thin line when it comes to all that, to be honest. Like, as much as it's good to publicize it, like, you know, over-publicizing, I think, is becoming an issue. Like, well, yeah. every time something done, it has to be put out there. But mm-hmm. I definitely understand and agree with you about stuff being out there to the public so they can see that it's there and be able to actually take advantage. <laughs> Yo, 
Real Sound Radio. We back in the building. Yes, sir. And we back in with our guest today in the building. Now on break, we just uh we just discovered what it looks like a gym. We got uh Joy and Contradictions, um poetry book. When would when did this release? Thank you, thank you so much. Uh I put it out June twenty twenty. Okay, June twenty twenty. Okay. And uh what was uh what's your backstory to this? I'm a show dive into this, you know, I'm I'm a, a new proud owner of this and I like you know what I'm saying? I like I like stuff like this, so what was your uh, backstory into into making joy and contradictions? Yeah, first of all, I appreciate the support. Uh, no for problem. For sure. You for just sure. showed this up this for what real. We do. This is what we do, for sure. Facts. And uh, so the background behind that, man, it's the poems that I wrote from between the age of 18 to 27. I'll be mm-hmm. turning 30 in November. For sure. For um, sure. And, yes, a lot of stuff is about family. It's about relationships. It's about self-development and professional development and all that kind of intertwine. A lot of different vulnerable moments and stories, Um, me just being accountable, you know what I'm saying? Like taking taking steps towards being a better person, um, being able to kind of resolve things if I have the chance with people, loved ones and stuff like that. And just a whole bunch of, yeah, life lessons. Mm -hmm. I say that to sum it all up. Before you get to the point where you actually put it out, you got to sit back and you got to reread it yourself. Was it ever hard to be vulnerable in that moment and say, okay, I'm really finna get this to the world? Ooh, yeah. So bas- basically when I wrote most of them poems, I say I wrote them in 2015. So for like a whole four and a half years, I was like going back and forth like, oh, should I do this? Mm-hmm. This is real. You know what I'm saying? How is like, you know, no names are in that specifically, but like how will people feel, you know, knowing that like I'm putting stuff out there like that, like showing my perspective and all that stuff. So it was hard. It w- but then I was just like, you know what? This is how I view it. And, of course, like me having like a whole bunch of accountability in the book and not throwing anything on anybody, I felt like it was a good thing to do to be able to show people like growth is possible. For sure. So you had a lot of scenarios where you had to take you and others out the equation but still tell the story? Yeah. Okay, I got you. And how was it like scaling something? Because you say eighteen to twenty-seven. How was it like giving like viewers and listeners and readers a, a piece of you for these years? You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of ups and downs through these years. These are like real prime years of you setting up your life. You know what I'm saying? So how was it giving such like vulnerability in the story? Man, it was it was real. I was just like you know, for every story, some of them I just. Some of them more towards the end of the book are more the recent ones. Mm -hmm. It it includes a lot of stuff like from the passing of important people in my life, too. So it was it was difficult, you know, like but at the end of the day, I felt like it was something that needed to be read and that like a lot of people would benefit from being able to see it from a certain perspective, like even seeing positivity out of someone passing, you know, for instance, like you got those memories, you got those lessons and just taking steps forward Mm -hmm. with it. For sure. Now, when you got, you know what I'm saying, you dealing with stuff like that, what do you draw inspiration from? Are you drawing inspiration from the experience of, um, of like, a, a loss of a loved one, a loss of, um, you know what I'm saying, like, anything. It could be, like, heartbreak, like, you know, some going on in life, anything. Are you drawing inspiration from those exact moments? Or are you pulling yourself back first, then getting inspiration to go for it? That's a great question. Yeah, I say that. Some of those were written, like, in the moment, Mm -hmm. like, when the emotions were high. Some of them were, like, kind of after I was able to step back in a way and reflect. Mm -hmm. And you hit the spot, like, yes, from talking about, like, relationships and love, passing a family, and also um, in certain parts just how to to grow, you know, how to step into that and, like, how to be able to still build with other people while you're doing that, too. Real talk. You spoke on on wanting to do biology. So at what point, like, which came first, your love for biology or your love for poetry? Ooh, I feel like, I feel like it was definitely biology. And then, like, when I got into college, I saw, like, a whole bunch of people doing stuff. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Watched a whole bunch of videos. Like, oh, okay. It's like rap, but then it's not, you know, Mm -hmm. like, being able to use your words and have different wordplay and to tell a story, you know, about different things about the way you feel it's kind of in a sense real related to all that stuff too Mm -hmm. and like you know throwing music into the loop make it even better oh for sure for sure now when you did uh poetry first then you was like you like all right i'm gonna dive into the music how did that work 
Yeah, so actually my cousin, he's awesome. He does, like, production and stuff like that. Um, shout out to him. I definitely want him to get back into tune because he's amazing. So he gave me some, like, short samples to, like, use. He's like, yeah, you might want to start using music, you know, in the background of your poems and stuff. And so one day I just decided to do it and then put it on SoundCloud. And then I was like, you know what? This could be something I could continue to do. Like, for sure, for sure. Yeah. That, out, that outside um, – that outside encouragement always helps to grow, you know? Thank you. You, you sent me Lakeshore Walks. Yes. Explain that to us. Because it seemed like it's some nice, subtle mm-hmm. music <laughs> where you can take a walk on the lakeshore. Yeah. So it, I actually wrote that when I, like, was walking on the lakeshore. Oh, like, cool. I live near the lakeshore, and so one thing that brings me a lot of peace is to be able to like walk in the mornings, do that and read and stuff like that. So it's one of the inspirations that I got when I was walking, seeing all the scenery and how it made me feel. And uh, yeah, just like over time, that just been the way that I really am able to like stay centered. And so Lakeshore, you know, Chicago Lakeshore. I was definitely finna ask you like, is is poetry like a, a therapeutic cleanse for you? Like, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like ever since I was younger, poetry has always been the way that I really was able to like express my emotions in a healthy way. It's really interesting because a lot of people would say like me being a poet, you would think that like I'm really able to like express myself and, you know, talk about my feelings and stuff. But for a while, I was only able to do that on paper, not in real time, you know, to be able to let people know how I feel resolve things chop it out and stuff like that so it's been a process that of course you know along with therapy has helped me like really uh drive things in would you say this has been one of your biggest accomplishments i would say yes i feel like it took me a lot to be able to put it out there um to collect my thoughts and just press play a lot of people like we was talking off air a lot of people don't see their dreams or their passions through. A lot of people give up at when they literally at the finish line yeah. and and say, "Man, I don't want to do it no more." Hey, how that how that quote go? Uh, why give up today when, when tomorrow be the day I might win? Big facts though, for sure. And you you saw it through to the point where you literally have a book. Like a lot of people, like when we leave this earth, we don't really have too much to show that we was here. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a that's something. That you can leave behind and the world gonna know you was here, like that's that's special, that's <laughs> powerful right there. Cause for real, a lot that's of people don't power. view it like that. And yeah. I ask a lot of people like, when you had these moments like this, do you ever sit back and just celebrate yourself? Like, damn, I did this. Yeah, cause this this major right here for sure. <laughs> Man, y'all, thank you, <laughs> for real. thank you so much for hyping me up and for all the love. Like, you know, I feel like it took me a while to like, you know, really be like, I did that, you know. Mm-hmm. I feel like it took like maybe six months to a year to be like, oh, this is what's been happening. Like people are showing up for me. People are really, you know, supportive and liking what I'm liking, what I had to say. And I was just like, I feel like for a while, I was just like me doing it. I just had to come to a place where I'm like, oh, okay, I did it. But then actually like, oh, I did it. That took a while for sure. For sure. Now, seeing as we still in a current pandemic, you know what I'm saying? You spoke on how, how, us going through COVID helped you reflect and see exactly what you wanted to do in life. So how much did did COVID play a part into this book actually being published? Great question. COVID did a lot for, I, I think it was, I I know for sure it was like March, right? When all the shutdown stuff started to happen. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, really like oh man like because I wanted to put this stuff out there and I was like you know what what better time than now like I heard a lot of people was like figuring things out and I was like you know what this is time where I get to sit down and be still I have more time to like kind of hash it out too so I I started um talking to other poets figuring out what they um process was like to put out their book asking them if they could be able to read mine and see how it was and like peer review it and I was like, you know what? This is this is a time. Why not? And I was just like, let's just do it. I was seeing, and then I was seeing everybody else. I was like, you know what? All these entrepreneurs out here doing their thing. I was like, man, let's just see what happens. Let's see if this can take off, just like what everything else I've been doing. 
And how and how has the uh, reception been from um, having out a book? It's been great. It's been really great from people, you know, sharing on the social media their favorite posts and stuff, or texting me and letting me know, like, oh, this one really sat with me. Like, I really understand where you was coming from with this, and it really helped me out. Or them just reading it just when they sitting down and having like free time. Mm-hmm. Like, I really never knew my book would make people feel this way and that they would receive it this way just by me telling some different stories in my life. So mm-hmm. it's been really great and to you, see. And you know, a lot of times when you, because uh, you spoke on um, on not being able to translate these feelings unless they was on paper, that's goals for a lot of um, a lot of people. And I know for uh, myself personally, that was a major reason why I got into communications because Shoot, for my own self, I was like, I was almost like the same way. Like, how do I communicate how I feel? You know what I'm saying? And now, once you on the other side of that, learning how to communicate, you uh, you can help so many others just by putting out a book like this. You know, so hey, it's it's possible. You know, thanks. <laughs> thanks. That means a lot. No, nah, this is real, real talk. What are the, some of the things that you you learned about yourself? Because, like you say, you have some of these from the age of 18. So going back, like, what was some things that you learned about yourself? I say that we in control of our emotions. We control what we say, how we say them. And, I mean, that whole saying where it go, like, we're the master of our own ship, you know, we can control ourselves. And at the, at the end of the day, that's the only thing we control and to be okay with that. So I think that's one of the major lessons that I've learned, of course, you know, not taking things personal, I know that's coming from like Four Agreements as well, which is a great book. Shout out to the Four Agreements. Hey, who, uh, shout out who, to the book. Who uh, who wrote that Four Agreements? Because I, I heard Jay talk about who who wrote that. Oh, I can't <laughs> even think of who wrote it, but it's it's definitely a, a good book to to give yourself perspective on life. For sure, for sure. Because a lot of times we grow up, our parents or the people around us have put preconceived notions or their own beliefs on us. And that book is a perfect book. Like, I, I gave it to my daughter to read mm-hmm. and, uh, when she oh, was, like, wow. 10 because I had a conversation with her, and I, I, I wanted her to know that I'm going to always be her father, but at some point she's going to have to live life on her own. Facts. And I want her to always view life from a clear perspective, mm-hmm. not what other people, you know, made them think. Or mm-hmm. and Social media is big. Like, she on TikTok all the time. So I don't want her to go around just just – latching on to things. I want mm-hmm. her to learn how to craft her own thoughts and her own process. And the four agreements was dope because it, it was given to me as a gift for, I can't remember which birthday. I got it for, as a birthday gift. And then I later got the fifth agreements as a birthday gift. Ooh. So, yeah, four agreements. Everybody go read that. Hey, that's right. major because a lot of times, you know, you grow up and, like, you got these, like you say, preconceived notions either on yourself or how the world is supposed to be. It, then that stop you from taking that step. That's like, that's like telling the kid, you know what I'm saying, the active kid that they bad all the time, 24-7. Like, yeah, they might do some bad things, but now you tell them you bad, them, they bad so long, they going to grow up and do something bad. You Facts. know what I'm saying? Because they don't know any better. You got to you gotta kind of translate that a little better. But that's major, bro, for giving them a a, a book like that. Now I got to check it out. You know, that might still help me today. You know? Man, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you look at life from a different lens, you know, because – even as a, a grown man, you gon you have things that you carry with you since you was a kid. You mm-hmm. know, and you might need to let go of some of those things. So, shout out to the four agreements. Now, I want to get into Lakeshore Walk. So, go ahead and announce that. Go throw us into that record. Yeah, for sure. So, Lakeshore Walks is an amazing song that I made when I was I was honestly meeting people on Lakeshore Walks as well. It's, it's wow, you know how how God works and like how things divinely connect. Yo, yo, it's your boy Biko. Make sure you head over to the Apple Store and Google Play Store and download the Illinois app right now. From there, you'll be able to stream Illinois Radio Live every Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. As well as stream podcasts, watch interviews, check out the latest news, and so much more. So head over there to your App Store and download the Illinois app. Ill Sound Radio, we back in the building. Yes, sir, back in the building with our guest today. Now, before uh, we get up out of here and everything, uh, what's, like, one message that you would give, like, um, you know, somebody who wants to make, it could be any other avenues that you pursue, but somebody who either want to make a difference, uh, whether it's in the community, want to make a difference as a writer, want to make a dif- difference as a music artist, what's one thing that you would give them? Like a word of advice, a, a lesson or something like that that you would tell them? Mm-hmm. 
Ooh, we dropping bombs towards the end. <laughs> For sure. I would say that as much as you know your should know yourself, know know your purpose in this life, and don't let anything shake you from it, or lead or lead you astray from it. For sure, that. Now, reflecting on on the past, let's just say ten years of your life, as you say took you basically 10 years to write that going from biology to poetry to assisting the community like what would you say has has been like that one thing that's kept you going throughout everything in life i would say community like the art y'all know how artists and how the community is i say just knowing that i'm around all them people being able to to catch vibes and inspiration from them and be able to figure out different ways for me to be able to connect with them too. I say has been something that has helped me continue along the way. And to know that like, you know, younger people are looking up to me, you know, knowing that they're able to say like, oh, I could do, I could do art or I could write about myself and stuff. And people will actually receive that and be open to listen. So. All right. Now, before we get out of here, you say you wanted me to tell the people, go get that Lakeshore walks everywhere. Right, it's, it's on all the streaming platforms. Apple the major Music. ones, yeah. Go buy that a dollar. It's a dollar. Like it always baffles me when we have artists up here and we, nobody wants to support them. Like you, you can't even get two bags. Remember, you get four <laughs> bags of chips for a dollar. You can't even get two <laughs> bags is, of chips now because they gonna throw some tax on that. So say, go spend that <laughs> dollar with her, bro. Lake Shore walks, and just vibe out to that. Wake up to that every morning. You feel me? For sure. Get them positive vibes. Now, before we get out of here, tell everybody how they can get in tune with you, stay in tune with you, find everything you got going on. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much. And you can find me on Instagram at Tanae B underscore. That's T-A-N-A-E-B underscore. You can find me on SoundCloud at Tanae B as well, on YouTube as Tanae B, and on Facebook as Tanae, I think with a couple more Bs, T-A-N-A-E-B-B or, so, <laughs> or something along that. But I love y'all, and uh, I really appreciate being here. Thank you for the time. So thank you. Oh, yeah. Jimmy, talk to the people. All right. Hey, shout out to Nate for coming through today. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but shout out to Nate, for real, coming through. Man, we appreciate you so much. You dropped a lot of gems on us, you know, and uh, you brought in one. Like I say, when you came through the door, everything about impression. And when you came through the door, I didn't know you had this on. You just took the curiosity of, are uh, we interviewing the, um, a poet and a, a music artist? Do you have a book on you? Next thing you know, I'm a I'm an owner of your book. You know what I'm saying? So hey, that's just a lesson right there. Closed mouths don't get fed, you know. So if if you got some curiosity and you wondering, just ask, you know. And it was it was a simple transaction. And when I get home, I'm gonna check this out. This might this might help me in more ways than I'm thinking it can help right now. So, but you keep doing your thing in the community and in the writing community as well. You know, uh, writers, especially writers in the same region and city, hey, one day we could connect down the line again. You know, that pen to draw us right back into each other, for real. So, hey, make sure y'all get in tune with all her works and everything she got going on. Make sure y'all follow Groove, Ouch. Groove Nuke, G-R-O-O-V-N-U-K-E. On uh, Twitter and IG, make sure y'all follow Ill Sound Radio. Every Sunday we have 12 p.m., 2 p.m., only on Illinois Radio. Make sure y'all go get that app as well. Stream music 24-7. And Jay, what you got to say to him? Uh, before I get into what I got to say, tell them where they could purchase the book. Oh, yeah, for sure that. Uh, thank you so much. You can purchase the book on my website at TanaeSpeaks.com. That's T-A-N-A-E Speaks.com. All right, now, y'all go purchase that book. Uh, shout out to you for coming through. Now, this past week, me and Jimmy, we've been going through our DMs, seeing who wants to get on our radio show. For sure. And I would say not a lot of people can pass the test to get on the radio show, so... You gave me an impression that you rocked with us from the beginning. So I'm like, man, anytime that somebody really show genuine love to us, it's like, man, we have to share our platform with them. For sure. So I appreciate you for coming, sliding through, chopping it up, speaking on everything that you spoke on. Because it's a lot of people that say they give back and they want to do good in the community. Not a lot of people actually do it. Like, a lot of people cap in these days. So to know that you've been through... Like, you wanted to be a biologist. Like, that's crazy. And you was like, all right, I'm going to step away from <laughs> that. Because, it's like, as soon as you said biology, I'm like, oh, shit, she's super smart. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, for you to, to say, nah, I'd rather help my community in a way that, that can impact right now, like, that's super dope. 
So shout out to you and everything you got going on. Continue striving for it. Don't ever give up on your dream. Keep doing that shit. No matter how many people say, nah, don't do that shit. Just leave them alone. You know what I'm saying? Just get away from them. But keep grinding. Keep doing you. Thank you so much. I I really appreciate that. And, yeah, my my hope is to, like, merge community work with healing through the spoken word arts and through Tanae Speaks. So I really appreciate that. And I receive that. I definitely will keep going. And shout out to you. And I'm going to play Lakeshore Walks one more time on our way out. Hey, thank you. So, so, man, it's Sound Radio until next week. Until next time, y'all.